Real Kramer of you. Kramer, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for sure. All right, let's, Fuck you. <laughs> let's go. And we're rolling. Good morning, evening, or afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the One Up Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Milos Bukaritsa. With me, are always, as always, our George and Manuel. And our guest today is Abby, who was an extra in one of our uh, films we filmed a couple years ago. Now, this is kind of a continuation of our last week's conversation, because we talked about um, the Road Reel movie we did called Reflections. Today, we're going to discuss Dark Horse, which is one that we worked on for a year prior, for 2019. All right, guys, so what is up? How have y'all been? I'm good. Doing Fantastic. Good. Also, can't forget to mention my main man Adrian behind the camera over here. What up? Whoop, whoop. Hey, cool. We actually y'all. have video this time. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, first time with video. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> God, the lights. We we cut the li- we uh, busted was a breaker. Buster breakers like three times in here trying to set this up. We have to turn off a whole bunch of stuff because these lights are. <laughs> we actually had to uh, turn off our heater in here because uh, and now we're just just a little cold. Just, it's it's like barely below freezing in Texas though. That is that is that is considered cold. So what is up, guys? How you been? Doing good. To be honest, horrible. Hey. <laughs> you Fuck this pandemic. <laughs> Fuck this Corona. Struggling with that whiskey, and that's why we're drinking not Corona, not sponsored, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> So anyways, guys, uh, like I said, this discussion is going to be about Dark Horse. So, uh, George, you directed that, right? Yes, I directed and wrote. And while I was writing it, I actually had Manuel, like, kind of give me his thoughts on it and help write out some dialogue. Then I went back and, like, uh, re- rewrote it, kind of edited out the flow of it just to make it feel more natural to my ears. Okay. And then... Uh, Basically, it was just between me, Brian, and Allie who set up most of the production. We tried getting Charles involved, Charles W. Bush, as a producer. And he came in, he helped out with getting some of the music licensing and trying to get us more extras. So for those who haven't seen it, what's the movie about? The, the short film's about a boxer who suffers a loss and he's just trying to build himself back up uh, to do a rematch. But at the same time, the coach is also talking to him, uh, kind of telling him that it's not all about the loss. Sometimes it's like just trying to improve yourself. So the real challenge is being the better you. Nice, man. Nice. So uh, you said the writing process. You said you, you and Manuel worked on that. Is that right? Yeah, because uh, I wrote most of it. I had an idea for it, and I knew what the theme was going to be, which was that your biggest opponent is kind of yourself. So I had that in mind. But originally it was a little bit different format it was just an idea but i had to flesh it out and i thought about having like the mentor kind of give him the inspiration in the in the short film so manuel helped out with uh figuring out the dialogue so how much editing did you have to do manuel be honest <laughs> how much did you have to change i didn't change much man i think he came with me with a blank slate and from there he just gave me the idea he didn't bring any dialogue he literally just Talk to me about the movie, and from that came inspiration about what I wanted to write. And then I pitched it to George, talked about it like the actor would say it, and he went on with it from there. Yeah, so when, as we were talking about it, I was like writing it down at the same time, and then like rewriting it, then just like figured out the flow. Then afterwards, we were pretty much ready to shoot, so I approached Ryan. And Ryan liked the story, and he always wanted to do something in boxing. Did you originally intend it, intend this film to be for the road reel, or did that just kind of happen? It, was, it wasn't It was intended for the road reel, because I kind of had the idea. I wanted to do it as something else, but it gave the opportunity to actually do it because of the road reel. And so once we approached it for the road reel, I kind of had to uh, kind of reduce it a little bit, because we had that three-minute time limit for the road reel. Yeah, and we, we touched on that last time on last episode about Reflections, where we had to cut a whole scene from Manuel's film. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, that is definitely something, like, if you don't come come at that, uh, like, if you don't come prepared exactly with a script for a project like this, you will have to do a lot of cutting, which which kind of sucks. But, uh, yeah, you kept on mentioning actors, man. So how was how was casting? How did you cast this? I know you had Ryan. I know the other guy, I think the other main actor was a boxer, I think you said, right? Yeah, Jesus Guzman Jr. Mm-hmm. He was a he's an actual boxer local in Fort Worth. I think he was just going up for like the Olympic trials. Wow, nice. But he was he was up for it. He was a he was a boxer at a little gym that I used to go to. Hold on. 
So he was a boxer at the gym I used to go to, and so I went to go talk to his coach. His coach told me to just reach out to him because he would be the guy that would be interested in it. And he was. He was. He came through. We ended up uh, on the day of the shoot where Junior was supposed to come. At the last minute, he was. He called me. He's like, hey, I can't make it because I don't have any gas money. Oh, no. So I was like, oh, dude, I'm going to pay you anyways. How about I just sell you like half of it now? And once you come, I'll sell you more. He was like, yeah, man, thank you. But like we were so close to losing our actor on the last day of shooting. Oh my God! Was that was that at the fabrication yard? At the fabrication yard, yeah, in nice. Dallas. So yeah, okay. So uh, so let's move on to other production. I know that we originally didn't film intend to film at that location. So talk to us a bit about location uh, scouting for that film and um, what happened with that. Well, whenever we we're location scouting, we had to find the gym. And originally for the short, we needed two gyms. So we were have. We're going to have a gym for them to train, then the gym for the actual fight. And for the actual fight, we'd have to use it twice or just shoot two fights on the same day to make it look like two different periods of time. But we could not lock down the gym for a long time until we just decided to shoot as much as we could. So we shot stuff for the locations in the house or some of the training stuff. It's just all over Fort Worth and then stuff at Manuel's house. He let us shooting his workout room and then on the last day of shooting at the fabrication yard we just decided to shoot the ending first and try and get as many people as we could to get extras and one of the extras there was actually a lady who had a friend that owned a boxing gym and so through Charles we kind of ended up landing that little gym the Warriors one in Irving oh nice that is awesome, man. All right, so moving on to just uh, talking a little bit about production and stuff like that. What kind of challenges did you face on the production itself that wasn't, like, related to, obviously, location? Because that seems to be an issue. Well, we had people who were really dedicated, Allie and Ryan. So Ryan was up for anything, and we would shoot whenever we had free time. So it wasn't like we had a set schedule. We just kept shooting more stuff or, like, a montage because we knew most of this would end up being put into a montage. And as we were shooting, we also kind of expand, expanded the story because mm-hmm. we're like, oh, we could do it for the road reel and then like uh, expand it and put it into other film festivals with a longer story. So there was the idea to make it a lot, a lot longer and try and reshoot some things. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of extra footage for this short film. Nice. And I think just the biggest, the biggest issue was locations because at one point we locked a gym down. It was like, I uh, can't remember the boxer's name, but there's a boxer on Camp Bui who owns a gym there, Polly Ayala. So Polly Ayala's gym. We we're trying to lock him down, but we we're going to shoot on the Sunday, and he's like, last minute, he's, he said, I can't come out. I don't, like, don't want to work on the Sunday. And I was <laughs> oh, like, I no. could get some somebody to like help you out, someone to be there and open the gym for you. And then last minute... I called him again, and he's like, oh, no, I can't find anyone, sorry. Ooh. And then he was uh, a friend of my boss, who I worked with, where I worked at <laughs> at the time, and he's like, well, can he just give you the keys? And I was like, I don't know, Polly, you know, why don't you ask? <laughs> so, uh, Abby, have you been on many other productions before this one? Uh, many other video productions before this one? Because I know you played the ring girl, right? Yeah, Abby was the extra, she played the ring girl. Before that, I mean... High school theater class. Okay, nice. So, how was this different from like your uh, your theater acting being like in a in an actual film? Um, I mean, it was a lot of fun. It was more fast paced. People just doing their own thing, working together. It flowed pretty well. Um, I loved it. It was it was a lot of fun. I I like the concept of the dark horse. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's important to kind of the story behind it. More people really should uh, not always focus on winning because it's a lot of failing too. So it's a great story. Nice, nice, awesome. How um, how was it whenever you showed up? To, like I know we had uh-huh. a lot of issues come up. That it took a while to start. Then we had to someone do the makeup for you, which took up okay. even more time that we didn't expect. Uh, it did, but everybody was helping, so it it 
flowed pretty smooth. Um, I could tell it, I mean, it was in a warehouse, so the, there wasn't a whole lot of lighting and it was kind of fa fast paced. So it kind of seemed like it was thrown together a little bit, but, um, what? Um, the makeup I felt was a little rushed, but, um, I understood cause you're on a set and there, there, you know, there's time limits. So you didn't quite like the makeup. <laughs> I, I, to be honest, I mean, I no, we, probably whenever we better, went <laughs> for that shoot at the warehouse, we ended up having to use a different makeup artist because the first one we had is I'm really sure good. she was great. She was, uh, I don't know though. I think she was starting out. She was uh, building up her portfolio. Okay. So she was like yeah. a newer makeup artist, but she did yeah. a pretty good job. But yeah, it, it wasn't horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it made an issue with us whenever it was special effects makeup. Because whenever uh, she put on the like the bruises yeah. for Ryan, we couldn't shoot close-ups. And then if we did, we had to shoot at certain angles. Cause I think she did. It was reflective. Good on that, you know, the special effects with that. Yeah, we tried our best not to really show close-ups of it because she l made it look like his eye was swollen by like taping mm -hmm. it up. Okay. So there was tape on there. You could see the tape clearly on some shots. So we had to, like, edit around that. Okay. Yeah. Man, another issue I remember, because I think that was the only day I was on production as well, was at the fabrication yard. Um, there was a rave next door. Uh, no. And I remember, like, when it was ending, I went over there. I was like, hey, guys, you want to be next in a movie? And a whole bunch of people were like, yeah, let's go. Of course. <laughs> but then again, you know, the whole makeup thing, unfortunately, it took, that took a long time. And because none of those people were, you know, ever on production sets, they don't know that everything takes forever. Dude, Acting, that was yeah. And then that, all of them left. <laughs> that was like one of the most stressful days and that night yeah. before we got the ravers to come over there was <laughs> that was around the time like abby got there and everybody was rushing outside because they thought there was a tow truck coming <laughs> and so yeah, everyone was yeah. afraid their cars were going to get towed so i met with abby i walked her back and while we were, they were doing that mm -hmm. they stopped the music so i started talking to the ravers and we convinced them to come over to be part of the movie yeah but since they were still doing the makeup on abby and they ended up taking a long time they people just started leaving yeah. so we it ended up with that they had a lot of fun and they were so focused doing it i could tell <laughs> and wow. we had like a generator to power like the lights that just consume so much power mm -hmm. i ended up putting like a quarter gallon in and within 20 minutes it was done oh my Jeez. god are, is it the same lights we're using now or is it something? yeah the same lights we're using right now oh manual i feel bad for your electricity bill brother <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's getting a little warm in here too. Might have to <laughs> like I said, we kind of killed the power off. a couple of times already today. So, uh, Manuel, what are your thoughts on the film? Since you weren't really there for well, I, no, actually, you were there for production for earlier days, right? Yeah, when they shut up my house, man, I was here for those days. It was pretty. It went pretty smooth. Um, they got here. I was in letting them do their thing while I was in my room doing my thing. Um, because I know George, he's easy on the setup. He knows what he's doing at all the, all the time. So I don't want to get much in this way because there's no, a lot, not a lot of room to work around, around my house. Um, him and Allie um, were doing all the light setup. And 20 minutes after they got here, I step outside to see if they need help. And they have everything set up in the garage where the work, workout room is. And I was like, oh, well, they're good. <laughs> so I go back inside and I come back out 20 more minutes and 20, like half an hour just to come check on them, see if they need anything. And they're like, oh, we're almost done. We're like in the last shot and i was like oh really cool and in my head i'm like did they get enough you know because that was really fast and shot after shot they were just knocking it out knocking it out and in my head i'm thinking the same thing like did they get everything they needed because they were flowing through it pretty fast and now seeing the end result i was like oh yeah <laughs> it looked really good like they uh they made a steady pace like the movie flows really good with the picked shots so it was smooth, um, I guess, overall. I was just here to lend them the house and supervise a little bit. But I was never really there for, like, the setup and the camera work because George and Allie had all that. I was just kind of like a producer, side producer, just letting them use the house and whatever they needed, I provided. Because um, I always believed in George. Anything he, goes, he brings to me, um, I'll always support him. So he brought that up to my attention i'm like man i love the concept uh anything you need i can provide you with 
anything I can provide you with, I'll provide you with. <laughs> Cause, and I did. And at the end, I, I loved the film. I loved the concept. I loved the end product. And even when it ended, it still has a new beginning because he says he wants to probably make this into a feature. So I'm stoked about that maybe in the near future to continue this project in bigger, more, in the big screen. Hey, now that you say, you know, now that you said workout room, I realized this used to be a workout room. Did you film in this room? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Oh, my God. That's <laughs> awesome. Hey, so this it podcast room actually has history, guys. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, Everybody do it. Push several it for movies. Did, you, did, you, did we show that anchor in the movie? <laughs> maybe, was that anchor maybe. in the movie? Was it? Maybe. Was it hanging up on I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> that's think funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. So, George, this idea of making it into a longer film, even a feature, um, um, so you said originally you wanted it to be a longer thing. Were you intending originally to make a feature, or is that an idea that came by later? No, the idea came by later, but I had, um, I had the idea of just making it short with that theme because the theme was what what was interesting to me. So I wanted to do just a short uh, about that. And once we actually started shooting it, we expanded it a little bit, and then we had to like cut it back down or take... I was basically re-editing the whole movie in my head as we were shooting it. Because oh. we ran into so many issues. But this was like such a short film that I felt like most of it I already had in my head. I just had to talk to Allie and Allie like made sure to get some shots and she'd give me her input and we'd try stuff out. So she was a great collaborator along with Ryan. Ryan had his own ideas so we'd kind of incorporate what everyone wanted and just try and blend it together. Yeah, Ryan Johnson, great actor, man. I love that guy. He's really good at what he does. But mm-hmm. Ryan was the one that stoked about like doing the feature, so I was like, "All right, let's try to expand this." Because Ali was super into it, so we're like, "All right, I think everybody who was part of it wanted to keep pursuing the story into something much bigger." So, um, if I remember correctly, we got like what fifth or sixth place worldwide, worldwide in action category, right? Something yeah, in like the action category, we managed to hey. get up to like fifth and fourth. Ooh, nice. I mean, unfortunately, that's not a winning place, but still, man, no. I, mean, I think that movie did pretty great. And then I think we ended up worldwide, like, in the top 20 for a little while. We were top 20. Oh, wow. And that's... then once they got close to actually picking out the worldwide winner, they stopped showing, like, where you were. So you can see where you were landing. So at the end of it, you can you didn't even know what, what you placed. But we were, like, top 20 for a while. And with how many submissions there are, I mean, it's actually, yeah. I think that's a pretty good accomplishment, that makes it honestly. About, about the top 9%. Wow. <laughs> so that means a lot of people probably saw it, man. That's good. Mm-hmm. It was great, and I had a lot of support on that film. Like, my boss at the place I was working at also helped kind of push it. So he helped, like, market it a little bit. So I think we probably got a lot more views through that, too. So, George, what's next? I think right now is we're working to finish up a couple other pro- small projects that I'm helping on with mostly Manuel's projects, so I'm helping him with his. And I think the next thing is to actually finish up that script and try to really shoot the feature. Nice. Abby, uh, when are you getting back into more acting? I mean, I'm available anytime, so... Are you looking forward really, to it? Absolutely. I, I mean, I, I love to grow in the business, so yeah. So what, what do you like about it? Like, why, why, why are you drawn to acting? What is, uh, what is it about um, it that makes you want to do it? It's kind of like an escape for me, uh, I guess, reality. Like, you get to play someone else and be something else. So it's just fun for me. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's awesome. Um, George, you talk about that story that that guy told you. Uh, that story about the Netflix guys uh, him thinking it's a trailer and he'll definitely watch it him being a boxer oh yeah not even a movie goer you should tell that so mm-hmm. while we were shooting at the location at the gym the gym was actually the last place we ended up getting so on that day it was just me Ryan and Corey showed up so Corey's Ryan's best friend Corey Cannon great actor and too, then yeah. I had uh, Carlos Cooking show up Oh, wow. <laughs> and so with him, we just ended up running two cameras for the shoot. And so he helped me like cover a lot of footage, get a lot of coverage. And while we were, we were there, the guy was saying that he really didn't want to do this, but the lady that was there that got hooked us up with the location, basically, she kind of talked him into it, and he was doing it as a favor for her. And then by the end of it, he's like, 
dang, you guys were so fast, like really professional. It's like you guys did better than the guys from Netflix who came to shoot here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, that's saying something, man, that uh, we basically guerrilla filmmakers, like, uh, left a better impression on him than a professional crew, man. That's cool. Then once uh, once we actually finished the video and I started, like, sharing it, try to get people to watch it and also show all the people who tried to help out in some way mm -hmm. with location and everything, I gave him the video or the link for the video. He said he watched it and he's like, oh, it looks just like a movie trailer. This is definitely something I would watch. So that kind of pushed the idea of a feature further in your mind, right? Yeah, I just really like that someone liked the end result. Yeah, that's cool. So how far are you? Have, you? have you done any more writing on it since? I've been expanding it, trying to trying to create it into a feature. But I've been throwing around different ideas as far as plot-wise. Mm -hmm. So I think I've so far I've come up with like three different versions of it. I just got either figure out a way to combine it or like just throw something out and stick to one well i mean you've got manual manual uh he's got writing skill man so i mean he could probably help you help you get that down i mean you know dialogue you know whatever we can work on your dialogue but like story wise man like like manual can make a really good story like the plot the main plot of a story like the movies i worked on like i said usually we have to touch up uh you know dialogue here and there but like the main story like manual's stories are perfect yeah. So, I mean, having him to help you on that will be, I think, will be perfect. Anytime you need help, man. I'm All right. Here. Well, I want to thank you guys for hosting this podcast. Thank you for coming, oh, thank Abby. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian, for coming out today. Sorry, yeah. No First video podcast. Woo! Next time, we'll try to get a mic up for you, too, man, so you can get in on this. Sorry, you kind of relegated <laughs> back there. It's funny. We're up here warm under all these bright lights, and oh, he's going to be back there freezing. <laughs> hey, I mean, we got some sound blankets. At least you kind of backed up on yours. Anyways, guys, <laughs> thank you so much for listening to another episode of the One Up Podcast with me, your host, Milos Bukaritsa, George Martinez, Manuel Gaona, Abby. Abby, just Abby, just Abby, just Abby. <laughs> just Abby. <laughs> <laughs> and Adrian Flores as our camera guy, man. You are the MVP. Also, we want to shout out to Tresford. He wasn't here today, but he brought us some gear that was very, yeah. very crucial for this podcast, guys. Thank you so much again for listening to this episode of One Up Podcast, like I said again. And we will see y'all, or you will hear us next week. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you, guys. Ooh. <laughs>